Hello and welcome to Life Questions. I'm Bill Harris. Do you have questions about life? With all that's going on in the world these days, how could you not? This program takes a hard look at the many issues plaguing us in today's world in search for answers. And we don't have to look too far because the Bible is full of answers. Though written centuries ago, it provides solutions to the modern day issues and concerns that we have. And if you don't believe it, stick around. Today we are joined by a panel of ministers who are students and scholars of the Word of God, and they are here with a biblical perspective to answer life's questions. And I want you to meet them right now. First off, we have Pastor Janet Wind of Cornerstone Church here in Lima, Ohio. Next, Pastor Michael Lyons of In Faith Ministries here in Lima. And then there's Pastor Tim Benjamin of Wayne Street United Methodist Church in St. Mary's, Ohio and um, followed by Michael, Pastor Michael Wyckoff of Joy Harvest Fellowship, also here in Lima. We want to thank you all for joining us today. Joining thank us today. You. Happy to have you with us. As we go into our discussion, I would like to start with question number one because it's a question that was sent in by our viewers, and we are so grateful to God for the viewers that help fuel this program with their questions every week. And this first question says, if the 2020 election has proven anything, it is that our country is divided. <laughs> is it even possible to heal? Considering it is so evident that half the people in the country, you know, think or believe one way and the other half think or believe another way. So what, you know, lay, lay at the American society on your couch, if you will, <laughs> counselors, well, and give the, us your answer. Well, the biggest problem we run into is uh, the two sides, uh, not only look at each other's enemies, but they also don't want to listen at all. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, some of the unrest that we have seen has been the product of people not feeling they've been heard, you know, let, let alone make any changes or do anything about it. Nobody's hearing anybody they don't agree with. Because as soon as, as soon as, you know, people don't agree, man, my ears go closed so hard and nobody hears a single word. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think that that's the risk we're running into. If we want to even step toward healing at all, we're going to have to start listening and valuing each other and not base that on whether or not I agree. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anybody agree with that premise or yeah. do you have another? I was going to say, I think value is so important um, that we value each person that we value. Um, and as, as you said, that, that we're willing to listen. And mm -hmm. I think as believers, we have such an opportunity to be ministers of reconciliation, you mm -hmm. know, to be salt and light and speak words of hope. Uh, I, I know we were talking earlier, we, we need to be people who are kingdom minded, that it's kingdom first mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. not all of these other things that we're, we're looking at, but that we're of the kingdom of God. And, um, and I think that's where our hope lies. Are we getting caught up then in the cares of this world? Is that what you're getting at? I think easily. Oftentimes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah, and I think that, you know, there's, there's two ways of having to approach the divide. And, and if you approach the divide and understand that there is a warfare that's taking place yes. <laughs> that's greater than the natural, then you'll understand that they're supposed to be in a divide. Okay, that, that's, let's just bring the reality where it should be, that this is not a new thing. Yeah. This has always been. Now, sometimes situations take place to reveal to us what already was in a greater way. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that there's a divide in, you know, philosophies, ideas, uh, the way things should go, uh, that, that should be something as uh, the believer that we understand is supposed to be. And Jesus made that very clear that I didn't come to, he came with a sword to right. bring division. Yes. And so there should be a understood divide uh, with the revelation of who we are as the body of Christ and who is governing the minds of the world uh, for the most part that comes against the government and the mind of Christ. And the Bible tells us very plainly that, that, that the devil is the God of this world. That's correct. It tells us that plainly. Yeah. yeah. That's and, and, and that's one of the, <clears throat> yeah. the, the big the, dangers we run into is the divide is actually healthy. You know, if we all went around agreeing with each other all the time, that, that's not healthy. <laughs> but, but, but it's when that divide becomes <clears throat> divisive, that, that worked uh, out in a way I didn't mean for it to, but when it becomes yeah. divisive, uh, that's when it runs into a problem because we're no longer iron sharpening iron. Now we're 
staying away from each other and only going to hear hear what, what people say that we agree with. Well, I think the other thing too, right? Just it's worldviews. You know, there's yeah. basically two sure. worldviews at war, and this is not a new war. This no. this really is as is, is ancient as Genesis. Um, but I think the body of Christ, in other words, the Christians, okay, we have to realize that uh, we can disagree and we can propound yes. our faith in a Christ-like way, yes. or as I think many of us, myself included, sometimes are tempted to do, is to uh, degrade ourselves by acting like everybody else. Yeah. Well, is there a situation where um, Christians are running the risk and perhaps engaging in becoming carnal and letting flesh take over because they're trying to identify with the world. Um, you know, say, I'm a Christian Republican. I'm a Christian right. Democrat. So I can't fellowship with you when in fact, the Republican, neither the Republicans nor the Democrats have the answer. We're putting our hope in the wrong places and the wrong people. Is that possible? It, it's not just possible. Yeah, it's likely. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just what's happening yeah. a lot, you know. Yeah. And uh, I, I think that, you know, what, what happens is, is when we try to attach anything other to what we are. Mm -hmm. When you say, I'm a Christian Republican, right. yeah. you, you just actually try to minimize what you've been called to right. be. And, and I think when we begin to try to attach any identity to the identity we've been purposed to be, yes. now we begin to bring in those mindsets and those agreements of what that identity represents. Yeah. And so until we you know, decide to truly separate ourselves mm -hmm. and be another nation, a holy nation, yeah. one, one apart from any other nation. Right here in the midst of this world. Right, right. Yeah. So, 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 so that's, that's where we have to become as body of believers that unless I can find it in my constitution, unless I can find it in my government, I don't really get too, you know, boisterous about it. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to focus on voicing uh, what I see and what really has been sent on the shoulders of Jesus yes. to govern me. Yes. And, 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 that, and I think that, that becomes a nation uh, a holy nation, the one that yeah. if we can separate ourselves, and, that, and that's the divide. That's where the divide happens. Yeah. And that should be the only divide. That should be the only divide, you know, and it should be the divide between light and dark. Go ahead. Go ahead. Say, and I think the beautiful thing about that is we have been called out ones, that we, we are called out and we are to be a peculiar people and a holy nation. And at the same time, Jesus was the friend of sinners. Sure. It wasn't like he said, okay, I'm, I'm calling out and we're being separate and we're not being salt and light. We're not, we're not infiltrating by helping free others and remove blind eyes and and the deception um, from the world because our battle is not against flesh and blood. Yeah, right. And so um, we have to be kingdom first. We have to yeah. be citizens of, of the kingdom and yeah, Jesus yeah. is our king. Yes, and yes. Um, so that's, that's where our focus has to be. And we see that you're saying Jesus sat down with the sinners, but he didn't sit down to identify Correct. With, the with their world or their right. lifestyle, like did he? Right, right. I, and you know, I liken that to, to Billy Graham. I'm not, not trying to elevate him to the status of Jesus, but I, I look at how when, he, when Billy Graham would go into the White House, he wasn't trying to identify with a political party. Mm -hmm. right. He was going in to minister and be a witness to that, to that man behind the Oval Office mm -hmm. desk. I, I, and today, ministers are, 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 are cozying up to politicians mm -hmm. for photo opportunities and they're like, you know, it's so different, isn't it? You know, mm -hmm. such a such tough statement that you just made. You said, I, I liken it to Billy Graham. I'm not trying to elevate him to the status of Jesus. Mm -hmm. and, and you don't, and that's good, but we all should be trying to elevate ourselves. Sure. And that's what he was trying to do. Yes. He was trying to emulate his big brother and his Messiah, Jesus. And that's go. what we all should be trying to do. Absolutely. So we should be trying to liken ourselves to him in that manner. Absolutely. That Absolutely. yes, I am going to sit down with the sinners, but I'm going to sit down in the sinners in the representation of who right. I've been called yeah. to be. Absolutely. Not trying to, you know, conform to who mm -hmm. they've been called to be. I want right. to show them right. 
something better. I want to show them something yeah. greater. Yeah. I can't show them unless I'm with them. I got to be that witness right. before them. Yeah, and then yeah. Christianity, because when, when you, you were talking about that when you asked the original question, and I agree with what you're saying, is, is Christian is not an adjective. It's a noun. I, I, it's not, I am a Christian <laughs> describing <laughs> this other thing that I am. Uh -huh. uh, I, I, I am I'm a Christian follower of Christ. And I, I think if we would approach situations like that and leave all the, the, the stuff after the hyphen out, mm -hmm. uh, I, I think we would be a lot better off. It would foster a lot more listening and a lot more connection if we would say we're under the banner of Christ and we have a lot of different uh, viewpoints represented here, but that's the, that's the first one. Yeah. And uh, I think if we were able to do that and represent, like, like you said, I, I think it would take the conversation to a whole different place. Yeah. And, and Christians can't even get, to, to some extent, they're not able to get over even denominationalism. Mm -hmm. not to, I'm not saying denominations are bad, but saying that no. I won't fellowship with you because you're not of my denomination. Or I won't fellowship with you because you don't baptize the way I do. <laughs> or because uh, uh, your stand on women preachers or whatever that stand may be. And if we have that kind of division going on, how can we reach out to the world? After all, Christ said we would know, the world would know us by our love, not by our political affiliation. That's right? correct. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. And we're setting a very poor example at that point. Yeah, and, and I don't mean to put the church down. I don't mean in that regard. Sure. I, I do mean to imply, though, that we have great work to do. I, I said when we were talking to another panel about this same discussion that when Jesus said that he would set his church up and the gates of hell would not prevail against it, what other, what other institution do we have on the face of the earth that is so strong that the gates of hell cannot withstand against it? We're so powerful. Yes, we are. And, and yet we're not exercising that to convince people to come to Christ. Can, can anybody expand on that? I, mean, yeah, well, can you, well, I think this is a time now where we have a great opportunity to do that, even more than 2019. You know, I think this is a time where um, Christians either are going to go higher or lower. I don't think anyone's going to stay the same. Mm -hmm. And there's dis despair, the there's unbelief, there's cynicism, where's God, and so forth, and, and a lot of Christians, and, and carnality, you know, and the ranting on social media and obsessing with the news, you know, the weeds are growing up with the plant and choking the faith out of mm -hmm. us, you know. Mm -hmm. So this can be an occasion for us to go down, but I think what we're gonna see are Christians who know their Lord, who are disciples, not just believers, but are disciples mm -hmm. following Christ. And this is gonna be uh, probably our finest hour. Yeah, yeah. You know, the number one, uh, I, I was watching a, an interview uh, yesterday that the number one podcast on the Apple podcast was a, a guy reading through the Bible in a year. And for mm. 10 consecutive wow. days, it was the number one downloaded thing. People are searching for that. Because right. I think people are, are tired of the fake and they're tired of the division. They're tired of the false fights and all this stuff. And I think they're looking for something real. And, and yeah. e e even our secular world knows where to find that. So <laughs> it's good. That's an excellent point. Listen, we, we will continue. We've got to take a break. And when we come back, we want to continue with, uh, is there a need for healing? How, would, how can the church move in and take advantage of this opportunity now with healing the divide that's in this country by portraying Christ and lifting up Christ? We'll be right back. Don't go away. Don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastors you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. All right, we are back. Now, as we look at these yet to be United States, <laughs> uh, what about this divide and the need for healing? Do Christians or should Christians see this as an opportunity to come in with healing? Because it certainly appears that whether it's Democrat against Republican, homosexual against heterosexual, anti-abortion against pro-abortion, you know, go on down the line, that with this divisiveness, it could actually destroy this country. I mean, you know, any enemy can come in when you're divided. Not only that, uh, a lot of countries, Rome included, it, it didn't explode, it imploded. Mm -hmm. It imploded. Yeah, it so was. is this a great opportunity for Christians to provide healing? 
Well, if you go back to where we were founded, I mean, clear back in Acts chapter 2, one of the very first things, I mean, not it was the very first thing that happened in the church was Pentecost. Mm -hmm. And it's when all the people were together. And one of the, the amazing things about Pentecost is, it, I mean, Acts goes into great detail to tell us there was a lot of different kind of people there. That, and for the first time in their lives, the, the, the language barrier came down <laughs> and they could hear each other speak, which also implies they were listening to each other. So, so, so the whole thing was communicating together. And that's and that, so that's been our that's been our M.O. since yeah. literally the beginning of the church. Goodness, I, I, I venture to say the flesh and blood did not reveal yeah. that to you. <laughs> yeah. So no, I, that was great. That was great. Yeah, yeah. And I really think if we could get back to that or at least see ourselves in that light, I think it would help help the issue for sure. Excellent. And Second yeah. Chronicles 7, 14 tells us that if my people, yeah. you know, it's he's not telling the the people who aren't believers, yeah. but see we can be see instruments there? for healing the land. The, and, whole, um, the whole land. Yes, absolutely. Not just the Christian land, Absol the whole land. Absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> That's true. So what is it going to take? to get us up to do that. I mean, uh, if, if Christians are not coming together uh, because of the things we've outlined already that, 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 that they're doing, what is it gonna take for us to realize in mass that we've got to come together, we've got to lay aside even the differences we have, the doctrinal differences, mm -hmm. there's more we have in common than, than, than we do uh, not have in common. Right. How are we gonna override that come together for, sa for the sake of evangelizing the world and fulfilling the mission of Christ. How are we going to do that? Right. You know, I, I don't know if, if there's a, you know, any magic uh, that, that's going to take place. I mean, this is nothing new. There's nothing new under the sun. Right. right. So yeah. this, this divide, this, the, the sex, the, the sets and the denominations, and, the, and, and this is nothing new. Now, so, so what's going to change? I, th I think that's the only thing that's really going to change is simply the heart's of the ones who are called in that season to to fulfill uh, the purpose of God. So, you know, God, God doesn't need everyone uh, to fulfill his purpose. He's, he, he does a lot with a little. And, and so he just needs those in this season, all right, who have been assigned to really be obedient to his spirit to function in what he's called them to do. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to understand there's only going to be a remnant yeah. and, and, and we have to be okay with that. Mm -hmm. And you have to decide where you want to be in that remnant. Mm -hmm. uh, it, this everything always comes down to your own personal uh, walk with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so what are we going to do comes down to what are you going to do? It, you know, so it's what am I going to do to bring about an increased walk with God that leads to one of a witness of true love, of, of true obedience to his word that will allow someone else to see what being whole looks like, mm -hmm. uh, what walking healed looks like. If I can show you that my life is whole and I'm healed. Uh, then you might want to get a hold of that healing. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you become so whole? Mm -hmm. How come you're not afraid? How come you're not walking in some of the same type of things that, that we seem to be walking in? Mm -hmm. Well, if I can show you that uh, by being faithful to what God showed me, then you might want to get a hold of that and I can help heal you with the same anointing of Christ that has healed me. And, and I think that's the way that we can probably help bring about a healing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Just briefly, Christ said that, you know, the uh, things are going to get uh, worse and better, you know, <laughs> uh, as far as the world is concerned, you know, nation will rise against nation and so forth. And, and so he talked about, I think you alluded to this, you know, a mother-in-law going against her daughter-in-law and so forth. He, he did come to bring division. Um, but I think really <clears throat> we're going to be more perplexed at the division because again um you know evil uh will get worse you know in first timothy it talks mm -hmm, about that mm -hmm. you know and in chapter four so in that context um you know it just underscores what you just said mm -hmm. pastor lyons that you know we have to be that that salt and light mm -hmm. in this time when division really we'll be getting worse you know, I, I think let, let's let's go to another topic here. I, I want to talk a minute uh, about um, Christian college students and the like. 
Uh, one of our uh, viewers has written in to say that studies indicate that 65% of Christian college students will leave their faith by the end of four years if they choose to attend a public college. <laughs> so somehow they get on the campus and there's temptation there. Uh, they're also listening to what the professors are saying that, that are not in agreement with the word of God. Sure. That kind of thing. Studies sadly aren't much better for students who attend Christian colleges. So what can we do to build a strong faith-based foundation in our youngsters? And what can be done to support college students who are questioning and ultimately walking away from their beliefs? Well, you know, the Bible says train up the way, a child the way it should go. And when they're old, and I like to put older, it mm -hmm. doesn't mean when they're 80 years old necessarily, right? right, right? right. But when they're older, uh, they'll not depart from it. And um, I've got six adults now, and uh, some of them just never departed from the way, and others did, okay? Uh, and I won't say that we did the greatest job, but one of the things that uh, now as children in their 30s are saying and looking back and talking about this said that, well, Dad, uh, the example that you and Mom, you know, set and so forth. Again, we weren't the greatest examples. Just don't want to lift myself up or anything we like trust, that. We know. We, okay, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, yeah, you know from experience, don't you? Right. You know me too well. Uh, but also, you know, training in, in the Word. And you know what? When, when you're 20, 21, 22, you know, you're very malleable. You're going to go into an environment. And, you know, they do depart sure. sometimes. They, yeah. but, but they come back. They come back. They yeah. come back. And, you know, the, and, and during that time, I just remember just keep praying for them, keep loving them. Now, you have to have that solid foundation of training them in the Word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Training them in the Word. They won't forget it. And I know other parents that have kids that are just out of control kids that are 38, 39, 40. They know the word. <laughs> they know the drill. They know what they're doing. You know, they know, okay? Mm -hmm. They're going to come back. And they are coming back. I, I've seen it. I've, I've lived long enough to, to see that they do come back. <laughs> um, you know, do all of them? Maybe not. Um, but uh, now I had my, my youngest uh, wanted to go to Yale. And I just said, oh, my God, why do you want to go to Yale? You know, the, the, the pit of everything, <laughs> okay, you know? And I was really concerned, but I felt the Lord saying, that's where she needs to go. And I, just everything just, just worked into place to do that. And wouldn't you know, she joined a, a, a Christian group there. Mm. Oh, my gosh, the, 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 the drill that they put them through, they had a book this thick that they had to read one semester on Romans. That was the first one. I looked through this thing and I said, this is great stuff. Mm -hmm. They saw themselves as missionaries in a hostile foreign country. See that? Wow. And they were instrumental wow. at getting rid of a lot of the degenerate stuff that they had. I, I won't mention on the air some of the events that, that were canceled because this group pioneered some movements and protests against that. No kidding. And she came out stronger. She found a good church in town. I mean, she came out stronger there. You know, she had gone to some other, you know, the Lord worked it out, obviously. But, sure. but you know, she was confronted. But you know what? This group on campus made her a strong Christian mm. based on the foundation yeah. she already had at Yale. So anyway. That's, that's, a, that's a good testimony. Go ahead. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I think um, just as you said, making sure that the parents instill in them, yeah. not just knowing about God, yes. but knowing Him oh, personally, yes. having that personal, yes. intimate relationship yes. with Him where they know Him. Yes. And then when That's they true, grow right. up and they get tempted to go off in other things, right. that they are going to come back yeah. or they're not going to go off yeah. at all because it's a personal relationship. Yeah. It's a knowledge. Their, exactly. Yeah, it's not their parents. their parents. Exactly. Religion. It's not their parents' I, relationship. I, I made a note on this question that the strength of God's word lies in the truth of God's word you know so why are they why, why aren't they holding on to the strength and why aren't they holding on to the faith the strength of God's word lies in the truth of God's word and when it's not properly given and received it's not properly held and believed mm -hmm. if we don't give the truth of God's word to our young people the proper way mm -hmm. uh, meaning that telling them the truth and not just giving them quotes and taglines, right. 
giving them Jesus, letting them know that in this world you, you shall have tribulation, yes. letting them know. I mean, one of the first parables that Jesus shared and, and, and the disciples want to know why you're talking in parables. It was about the seed and how the mm -hmm. seed is sowed in the heart. And that's where the enemy comes instantly mm -hmm. and take it away. Mm -hmm. and, and he lets them know that this this is going to be this is how the word operates. Mm -hmm. And I think that we have to understand that with our children. And when we don't give them that word properly and, and put the real word in their heart, it doesn't have a chance to take up the root to be able to sustain the attack when the enemy actually comes later in life with the tribulations and the questions and the cares of this world that allows that word to get choked off. When we give them the word just then, you know, just little phrases and we never really teach them the word. Mm -hmm. The word doesn't get inside of them where they can actually sustain the, uh, the, t the cares and the fight of the world. Sure. And, and, and I believe when we do that. So what I think we need to do as, as parents, as, as leaders, as those who actually are tasked with the responsibility of training up our children is train them up really with the word of God and not just with coming to church and sitting right. to teach them the word, Religion. to show them how the word works to let them see how the word is supposed to be applied in their life, that will keep them in a place where they can hang on to the word when the enemy comes against them in life. And, and the, the other, the one of the things that too, with six kids, <laughs> they all said the same thing, okay, mom and dad, you weren't, no, you weren't perfect, because we said, we weren't perfect, no, mom and dad, you weren't perfect, but what you did do, you loved us. Spe the ones that strayed especially would say this. Mm -hmm. You know, in fact, the one that strayed the most, he said, you loved me, and you didn't throw me away, you didn't discard me, you, you talked to me respectfully. And that was the comment number one. It wasn't, oh yeah, you trained us in the word, you, know, you brought us to church, you know, I mean, yeah, you did all that, but they said, no, the big thing was you loved me while I was unlovable mm -hmm. yeah. in my uh, falling away. Yeah. And, and I, I think one of the song. scripture passages I think that speaks to this most uh, clearly, and it's probably one of the more bizarre scriptures in the Bible, is when Abraham takes Isaac up on the mountain to sacrifice him. Uh, it says the reason that God asked him to do that is he was testing Abraham. And I always thought that was weird because testing implies there's something about Abraham God didn't know. Seemed a little late in the story for God to be trying to figure this out now. So what I think actually happened here is uh, it was a demonstration for Isaac. I'm so faithful that I'm willing to put this on the line. Yeah. And, uh, and, that's, and I think that's what he was doing. He was demonstrating for Isaac the importance of the covenant, the importance, and by training him up in that way, left an impression on him. Amen. Now, we're going to have to leave it at that. We're all out of time. <laughs> Thank you very much. But, you know, the good news is that this same panel will be back with us again next week as we continue further with life issues. So be sure you tune in again next week. Until then, I'm Bill Harris. Bye-bye for now. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.